Ooh, I do not like heights. Good morning from day two of double S two three five. There's a pigeon right there. Well, they are clearly not afraid of heights. Okay, properly now. Good morning. We got coffee. It's gonna be another very busy day. I'm giving a talk this morning, so during the post session I'm prepping for that. And then I'm giving a talk this evening about tests. If you've watched any of my videos, you know I'm all about tests. It's a really impressive mural. It's really cool. We wanted to survey our nearest one million stars. In fact, 70% of all of our radio transmission happens in that plane itself. Across all of the frequencies that can see me. And in the blink of a cosmic eye, it settles the entire galaxy. So I'm going to show that again in super slow motion. Slow mo, eight seconds in, uh, eight, for eight million years. Each little white point is a probe that radiates away. Point number two um, is that not only can these surveys do SETI and search over wide areas of the sky for long periods of time, they might actually even be good at it. I love the headshot booth. That's a great idea, especially for students, postdocs, people who are trying to get jobs. Giving two talks in one day has been slightly overwhelming. That's okay. I'm a pro. I've been thinking a lot today about trajectory, about the future. So much of this meeting is about hustling and networking and showing off what you've been working on, so what you've been working on, reflecting. But I think what makes me most excited about is looking forward. It's the announcements of new discoveries that suggest that we might discover all kinds of new things. Today, TESS announced its first, I think, terrestrial mass exoplanet. How many more of those are we going to find? It's amazing. My talk this morning was about SETI. I really do think there's a big, bright future in terms of SETI work with large data sets, sort of statistics and big data SETI. Tonight I'm talking about stars and TESS, and I really think that TESS is going to be a huge part of my career going forward, or at least I hope it will be. I'm standing right now in the eye poster area, and right now it's between poster sessions, so the poster hall is a little bit empty, but the eye poster area is remarkably quiet. And here's my frank answer. I've been guilty about this too. I have not been coming to the eye posters as, as regularly over the last couple of years. So I hereby commit to coming to the eye posters henceforward. I think there's an opportunity to innovate and do something new. Maybe next year I'll even try one. I've also been having some really interesting conversations with people about like the future of this meeting. AAS is really big. Now it's not as big as some meetings, it's only 3,500 people. But still we've reached some critical size where sessions overlap, it's very difficult to see all the talks you want to see, and it's becoming even harder to organize. It's difficult to grow and scale a thing like this. One person on Twitter said they were old enough to remember when posters became a thing. Now posters are the default way we communicate in some of these meetings. And I'm standing here next to digital posters, something entirely new. The future of AAS may look very different. I'm all for radical change. Let's get rid of the short talks, or maybe eliminate Q&A periods after talks. Maybe let's have three times as many coffee breaks. I don't know. Let's just innovate. Let's try new things. And I think that's the trajectory of AAS. Hi, I'm Ali Costa from the University of Virginia, and I'm talking about ways we can generate discussion of astronomy courses to change how we teach and how students uh, flourish in our classes. Hi, my name is Alyssa Goodman and I'm from Harvard University and I'm here enjoying the AAS in Hawaii and I can't tell you what I'm presenting because it's embargoed by nature, but you can watch the press conference at 10.15 a.m. Hawaii time tomorrow. So my name is Nicholas Mundrick, I'm a grad student at Harvard University working with Chris Stubbs and we're working on doing photometric calibration for LSST. Hi, I'm Dave Wilson, I'm at UC Austin and I work on the uh, the measurements of the ultraviolet spectral characteristics of low mass exoplanetary systems or mega muscle survey. Is this, is this okay? <laughs>
Hey, I'm Ben Toffelmeyer. I'm a postdoc at UT Austin, and uh, I work on young stars, young planets, and um, all the cool things that they do. Okay, time to go get my talk ready for the TESS open house. I had no tested exoplanets. Did you know that? It's an exoplanet. Getting ready for the TESS open house. I'll be talking about stars, no surprise. It's going to be a fun event. What I'd like to do uh, in just a few minutes is to uh, review some of the accomplishments of, uh, of TESS in the past year. This shows all of the dots are planet candidates from the first year TESS mission in the southern hemisphere. So, so TESS, I think we all agree, is one of the best missions for exoplanets. And that seems, that seems like a good thing. But I think we can all agree that really, TESS has been secretly, all along, a stellar activity, a stellar variability mission. statement that the key legacy of the test mission is going to be to find us the very best targets for atmospheric characterization across the entire sky. Uh, Jim Davenport might disagree with me. Hi, my name is Natalia Guerrero. I work at the test science office at MIT and I manage the team that makes TOIs. Hi, my name is Emily Gilbert. I'm a PhD candidate at the University of Chicago. And today, I announced TOI 700D, TESS's first habitable zone Earth-sized exoplanet. Hi, I'm Daniel Giles, a PhD candidate at the Illinois Institute of Technology. And today, I gave my dissertation talk on um, finding the weirdest stuff in the Kepler Input Catalog, and soon, other catalogs. Hi, I'm Kate Meredith, and I'm from Glass Education, and uh, we have been doing accessibility work uh, for a number of years now, and we get the honor of working with the uh, Space Telescope Science Institute. We're going to be doing a project to uh, accessibilize and sonify the mass database. So we need to find undergraduates who are interested in astronomy, um, astrophysics, physics, and computing science to work with us. So contact me, Kate Meredith, at glasseducation.org. All right, talk number three for the meeting is done. Woo. Tomorrow's going to be a little more relaxing because I don't have to give any talks or presentations. But I already have like five meetings. It's going to be great. It's going to be a great day. I was so happy to give this talk because I genuinely love the data and what this mission's doing. But more than that, I love the test community. It's a bunch of people who are very passionate, who have been involved in this data for a long time. And I've made a lot of close friends. And it's a wonderful community to be a part of. I also think this is a great time if you're a student to get involved in this kind of data. If you think stars are cool, and trust me, hashtag stars are still interesting, this is a great time to be working on stars with missions like Gaia and TESS. Okay, I think that's it for me today. A great day. Tomorrow is a little more relaxed. See you there.